else. Okay. Ah, goblin ambush. Everyone, roll initiative. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So, next, uh, kind of, kind of building on the session zero is character creation in ICRPG. Now, character creation takes effort. Um. But but it's worth it, obviously. And a solid character, I think we can all agree, is more than the sum of its parts. And you know, your character is supposed to be more than just loot, six stat points, and bioform bonus. Uh, you know, a character is extension of of yourself. It's like the portal through which the players experience your game world. And and yet we have people. I've had people in in my games who slap together this one dimensional character that has little more dimension than like the thimble piece from monopoly you know <laughs> and um and uh, no not not at our tables not at our games we're going to do better than that so we're going to talk about things like min maxing backstory which is absolutely necessary and stats have a reason for your stats my take on that uh, first, I'm going to go with min-maxing directly. We discussed it a little in the past, and I saw a few discussion on the group about min-maxing, like, oh, what if the player puts all these stats in decks and blah, blah, blah. Is there a diminishing return for putting six stats in? Nah, nah, nah. Well, I mean, in ICRPG, it doesn't really matter because with those six points, if you go min-maxing, you're going to suck at many things. And <laughs> if the DM is smart, not that he wants to kill you, but... If you only chose that you dex check, maybe you're gonna say survive, but it's only take one failed con check and you take one D8 poison damage and you're fucked. Like you have 10 HP. So, I mean, min maxing is fair with me in this sense. As long as you have a backstory that backs it, I mean, you're really skilled in dex because you were raised by monkeys. I don't know. You know, it's just if it makes sense. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm fine with it, but you're gonna die at some point in the adventure unless I'm really like a good DM and I, you know. So that's for min maxing. My my short take on that is that min maxing is is not always a bad thing. Like it's not always bad to take six points and put it all in armor, as long as the stats have a backstory related reason for that to happen, and you play your character as such. Right. Um, if if you're if you're a mecha that is a cobbled together out of garbage made of duranium, <laughs> and you have a very basic processing core, great. Yeah, you're gonna you get two hearts and twenty armor to start. You know, <laughs> like, but but um, as long as there's a reason for it, I, I don't think that it is always a bad thing. As as long as the, p the person who's doing it acknowledges that they're doing it and and kind of um rps appropriately yeah and i think going I think it's my turn next right yeah yeah, it's your yeah. Turn. yeah. great because i'm gonna dovetail off this slightly i think going along with that you know having a backstory is great but um and for me, necessary if you're going to make a character that has, you know, six points in dexterity and, uh, you know, you're going to, you know, just shoot everything that comes your way. Um, as a game master, uh, just remember that, you know, constitution checks are a thing for poison and cold. And fear yeah, and uh, charisma checks are a thing for, you know, horror and insanity and uh and and you're and you're good to go you know the the often neglected uh stats in creation can easily be the ones that keep you alive the best <laughs> and um so i wouldn't really worry too terribly much about the whole min maxing problem because i think you hank you created a system that is brilliant in its design in that one, you kind of need to specialize your character, which I don't know if that is actually min-maxing or not, but index card is deadly. It's an insanely deadly game, and that's awesome because that's what makes it that's what makes it exciting. That's what make that's what forges heroes in the story. Um so yeah, if if you're going to be the one habitually missing that uh, constitution check in the frigid north then uh, you're going to have a bad time. Um, <laughs> Good 
that. As far as making backstories and actually creating a character's concern, I like to create my personal characters and my NPCs as if I were writing a novel. So if that person is not going to be interesting outside of gameplay, then I'm not going to uh, I'm not going to have a good time with it. Um, but if he's going to mess up constantly and just doing what it is that I want that character to do, then I'm also not going to have a good time with it. So you got to kind of marry the two when you're constructing your awesome gunner or, or bard or what have you. For min-maxing, in my opinion, um, it's not a problem of the book. It's a problem at the individual level of, uh, of the players. How they interpret, uh, inter understand the rules and how to play. Um, I think they want to play. Yeah, they want to They want to win. That's what I meant. Yeah, uh, it, it comes from uh, a perverse uh, understanding of what a RPG is. Um, they they see it as a a game and not as a display uh, in my opinion a, a tabletop RPG is this play you're acting you're acting in a play where where you roll stuff and you you actually have you're a hero that actually does something and uh, min maxing exists because players uh, are not able to uh, the difference between a role playing game and a game Actually, there shouldn't be role-playing game in role-playing, in my opinion. I think it should just be role-playing, and that's it. Because, um, uh, yeah, okay. And for backstory, it comes to the same thing. Backstory um, explains why a role-playing game is not a, a game. It's because you have that backstory. You have that connection with your character. You are Galt, you are a Cord, you are... Kindle when you you play your, those characters and you think like them and oh you want to blow up a ship you'll blow up a ship you want to blow up a freaking <laughs> rover you're gonna blow up a rover uh, who did thank that you, Kindle. <laughs> Kindle my damn ship <laughs> um, damn damn it Kindle and it's it, it backstory and and the understanding of of what the game is makes the game cool yeah that's what I have to say. For me, I, I think it would help to start out with maybe a definition in terms of what I think of when I think about min-maxing. And first of all, let me just say, I don't think there's anything wrong with wanting to optimize a character and making the best character that you can. If you want to make a, a DPS build or you want to make an awesome tank defender, I think that's awesome. Um, I, I think what the problem comes in in min-maxing, and, and we talked about this a little bit beforehand, we all kind of agreed that it was more of a behavioral um, issue of certain players who want to outshine other players at the table um, through their build. Uh, they they want to get some sort of advantage and kind of at, at a at a mega level win the game. <laughs> and um, I, I think that's where the problem with quote unquote min maxing uh, comes in. I, I think that the good news um, about ICRPG is that it, it's so simplistic. Um, and, and I don't mean that in a, in a bad way. I, I think that that's the best part about it. it. It's such a simple, fast, fun, friendly, intuitive system that, that if you, if you want to put all your points into damage, go for it, but you're really going to stink elsewhere. Uh, if you want to put all your points in armor class, go for it. You're, you're really going to stink elsewhere. Um, as, as Hank said, let the, the, you know, unleash the creative DM on that fool. Um, it puts all their eggs in one basket. <laughs> Um, so that, that would be my answer um, for the, the behavioral issue. Uh, I, I think that's probably a, a, a feedback session with that player in a conversation. Um, you know, in a sense, they, they kind of have a booger on their shirt. And, and if I were the person with the booger on my shirt, I, I would want somebody to tell me like, hey, dude, you kind of need to do one of these. Um, <laughs> rather than going through my whole day with a booger um, for everybody to see. And, and so I think you have to have that type of conversation with that player. And, and if they, they don't want to drink the Kool-Aid, then, then maybe they just don't need to be part of the group, unfortunately. Um, but Ooh, that would be my take. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to pass my baton to the anchor man of this team and uh, let, let him win the relay for us here. The anchor man. <laughs> the anchor man. <laughs> yes. Well, you guys nail it with the min-maxing discussion. I think especially, Mike, you, you nailed it with the 
the distinction between the, the gaming concept and the and the play concept. Um, for me, uh, a character creation and the the thing that I when I sit down, especially with people maybe I don't know that well, or people who are new to either my table or to whichever game we may be playing, uh, and as well as when I sort of look within. I mean. I've been very lucky lately, especially to be a player in several games, not just a DM. And uh, the, the number one thing that I try to bring out first and that I also try to look for in myself first is to take a quick look around. And it's kind of like that first like 20 minutes when you come into a party. And I don't mean a role playing party. I mean, literally like a house party. And you're not quite sure who those dudes are over there. Like those people look a little annoying. And, and the question that you ask yourself right away is like, who can I be a friend to? And how can I go sort of ask them questions and sort of make it about them? And how can I fit? And, and that's always the first question I ask. And it's especially lately has been leading to some of my favorite characters I've had in a long time, like Deck from Harbinger was my sort of Jeff Bridges character, like from Big Lebowski. And oh, nice. I, it totally started as kind of just a voice that I wanted to do and an attitude I wanted to bring to the table for sci-fi. But it really became a part of our group. And and same with Murph, who's kind of, you know, my comic relief dummy robot, which I think is very common for robot players. Um, they kind of play trash cans. And, and, and that trash can type player to me, I think is, is a perfect example of not like how awesome can I be, but how can I, how can I make everybody else feel a little bit more awesome? And, and it will inadvertently lead to you being super awesome. <laughs> so I don't know if that makes a ton of sense, but to me, it's always that question I'm asking as I learn who my players are going to be in the next game is like, what are they like? And like, what do they lack? And what, how could I just kind of go right in there and be a fan of them right away? And, and how can I storyify that and, and let someone else like flex? Cause there's almost always somebody who's like kissing their biceps. <laughs> and, and so how can you jump in and hold that person up and be like this? Yeah, this guy kisses his biceps with a plus five. Yes. You know, <laughs> and, and uh, you know, be an athletic supporter. <laughs> <laughs> and and so far it's never gone astray for me. It's always worked out really good. Even when we played um, the Frozen King and we played Black Hack, and I played with a uh, Jeremy Lilly who played this dwarf who was like a really classic, tough, badass dwarf, and I just kind of played this anonymous archer who basically just watched his back. That's really all I did, but he appreciated it. And, and that gave us our context. Like, my story never really became anything. Who I was, I don't know who I was. It's just he liked me because I always covered him. <laughs> and, and, like, that, that made a relationship that we, neither of us saw coming. And to me, that's what made that game night so fun. It's, it was such a simple little adventure, but it was great to not be the dwarf. Because I'm always the damn dwarf who's, like, indestructible. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Uh, 